Pay yourself first is a popular phrase in personal finance and retirement planning literature. It suggests individuals should contribute to a retirement account, emergency fund, savings account, or other savings vehicle before spending their paycheck on anything else. The pay yourself first method is a pretty simple concept to understand, but actually applying to your own finances can become a little more complex. To help you put this plan into practice, this episode will break it down step by step and reveal some of the advantages and drawbacks of paying yourself first. But before we go too far, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next videos to find the right budget for your lifestyle. What it means to pay yourself first. The pay yourself first method, also known as reverse budgeting, is a savings strategy that says individuals should save a portion of their paycheck before spending any other money on bills, groceries, or discretionary items. The amount saved is typically predetermined as part of a larger savings goal and is often funneled into retirement funds and or saving accounts. Many financial experts and individual consumers who subscribe to this method choose to have funds automatically redirected into their elected savings account. For example, if you want to put $200 of every paycheck towards your retirement account, you could set up an automatic contribution rather than physically transfer funds each pay period. For many savvy savers, this makes it easier to commit to a monthly goal because the amount never actually reaches your checking account, but is rather allocated directly towards your savings. There are several options you can employ to make the pay yourself first strategy work for your finances. If you prefer to make the transfers on your own instead of automatically, that's totally okay. This budgeting style is really all about consistency. Contributing a set amount each month to your retirement plan or savings account can really pay off over time. Why is it important to save first? Like any financial decision you'll make in your lifetime, you'll want to consider the pros and cons of subscribing to the pay yourself first philosophy. The primary benefit of setting aside savings first is building the amount you have saved over time. This strategy forces you to live within or below your means so long as you don't start swiping your credit card recklessly instead. Here are a few other potential benefits you could reap if you could employ the pay yourself first strategy. You can save up for big purchases like a home, car or dream vacation. Or put your hard-earned dollars towards an emergency fund, personal savings or retirement. Contributing to accounts that earn compound interest allows your money to continue growing the longer you leave it untouched. Many retirement funds and other saving options are considered tax advantage. This means that your dollars may be exempted from tax or in the case of IRAs and 401ks, tax deferred so you'll pay taxes later on when you make a withdrawal. Drawbacks of the Pay Yourself First method In addition to the positive aspects a Pay Yourself First budget may offer, there are some potential drawbacks that could ensue under certain circumstances. Put simply, the strategy simply does not work for everyone. As you learn about the Pay Yourself First method, consider how it fits into the context of your personal finances. Here are a few examples where Paying Yourself First may not work to your benefit. Without following careful money management advice, you may find yourself scraping for change to make ends meet. Before you commit to a monthly savings goal, use a budgeting calculator to determine how much money you can reasonably afford to save each month. While prioritizing your savings can help you boost the balance in your savings account, it may be worth paying down debt first. Because interest compounds over time, waiting to pay off a credit card or a student loan, for example, means that you'll pay more interest the longer there is an outstanding balance. As you consider the various strategies you can use to build your savings, remember to take a close look at the potential pros and cons you may encounter. There are plenty of saving styles you can leverage, so don't count yourself out if this one isn't the best fit for you. How to start paying yourself first now that you know what it means to pay yourself first and have had a moment to consider the potential benefits and drawbacks, let's take a look at how this strategy actually plays out step by step. 1. Evaluate your monthly income and expenses Before you decide on the amount you want to save each month, take a look at both your fixed and variable expenses. Your fixed expenses are those costs that stay consistent month over month, like your rent or mortgage payments, student loan bill and health insurance for example. Your variable expenses on the other hand aren't always the same amount each time and sometimes you don't incur them at all. Entertainment costs, vehicle maintenance and groceries are all examples of variable costs and so their price tag may vary from one month to the next. Just do your best to estimate these. Once you can project your monthly expenses, subtract the amount from your monthly income to see what's left over. Depending on your savings and greater financial goals, you can tweak some of your spending to free up more cash. 
2. Identify your saving goals and commit. Now that you have a better understanding of your income and expenses, you can set up some saving goals. If you're not sure where to start, consider the 50-30-20 rule. The rule says, 50% of your budget should go toward essential expenses such as housing, food, utilities and minimum debt payments. 30% should be reserved for wants and lifestyle expenses. 20% should be funneled into your savings and any extra debt payments. In addition to setting forth a savings target, you also want to think about where you want your reserved cash to live and hopefully grow. If you want to save up for retirement, a retirement account or an IRA might make sense, whereas traditional savings account might work better for those wanting to save up funds for a shorter length of time. 3. Review and re-evaluate whether you're using the pay yourself first method or another saving strategy, it's important to remember that your budget should never be static. As life changes, your finances follow. A better salary or a reduction in your living expenses could present more opportunities to save, while a pay cut or recently incurred expense could have the opposite effect. To keep your budget optimized and up to date, take the time to review and re-evaluate it on a regular basis and when significant changes arise. How to succeed at paying yourself first 1. Automate your savings There's nothing like having systems in place to save ourselves from ourselves. When your paycheck hits your bank account, it might be tempting to use that money for the latest gadget or the big blowout sale. We know it's tempting. However, setting up automatic withdrawals from your paycheck or from your checking account into a savings account will help you succeed at paying yourself first. It reduces the temptation to spend money that you have earmarked for saving. 2. Have your employer do it One of the easiest ways to pay yourself first is to do it through your employer. You can save for long-term goals like retirement by contributing to an employer-sponsored retirement plan like a 401k, 403b or thrift savings plan. Talk to your payroll or human resource department and begin by investing a fixed amount or a percentage from each paycheck. Did you know you can have your pay direct deposited to more than one account? Although this may not be an option for everyone, it might be an option available to you. Just as you can have a fixed amount or a percentage contributed to a retirement plan, you can do the same for general savings. All you need is the routing and account number to your savings account and voila, just like that you can save money. This is also a great way to keep your bill money separate for money for your goals. Again, you can talk to your payroll or human resources department about setting up direct deposit. 3. Automate your investment Paying yourself first isn't all about saving money, it's also investing. Saving money is no longer enough to build wealth. Saving for short-term goals like vacations or a new car is great. For long-term goals like college funds and retirement, investing is key to building wealth over time. The pay yourself first budgeting style can be a favorable way to boost the balance in your savings account, retirement fund or other savings goal. However, budgeters should reflect on their unique financial situation to assess whether this strategy suits them. In most circumstances, it would be in your best interest to pay down debt before you start making monthly contributions to your savings. That's it for this episode. Please give us your feedback in the comment section below. To watch more episodes on financial topics like this, hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to support us even more, buy us a coffee from the link in the description. Good luck and see you in the next episode.